Hi, I'm Austin Chernowski. I'm a part of the SURE program. Uh, I'm in the fall, I'm going to be a master's student in the Industrial and Operations Department. And uh, I worked on a project uh, involving stochastic modeling of total patient care pathways. So just to give you an overview of my project, I, my research support was from Mark Van Oyen and Jonathan Helm, the faculty advisor and PhD candidate, respectively. Uh, I'll be discussing patient flow uh, problems in hospitals and also the data analysis that I used and the solutions and continued work with this project. So in many hospitals, there are patient flow problems. Uh, the problem arises when there is poor communication uh, or poor information feedback uh, between the hospital admissions and hospital units. So basically a problem where the people admitting people into the hospital aren't communicating or getting the information they need from the hospital to know uh, how full or, or empty it is. And this results in high uh, census variability or high variability in the number of people in the hospital at any given time. And the effect of this is that at those times when there's a lot of people in the hospital, you can end up with bed block or cancellation. Uh, bed block is basically something where I'm, suppose I'm a patient trying to move from one ward to another. Uh, if the ward I'm trying to move to is full, then I can't move there. The bed is blocked and uh, I, there's a major problem there with me receiving the care that I need. Uh, also with cancellations, the hospital's uh, admissions department will often cancel elective procedures when it gets too full, which uh, isn't good for patient care. Uh, this also results overall in higher costs for the for the hospital. So the solution that my research uh, looked into was controlling the hospital uh, admissions and to decrease the variability that uh, the average census has over time. So the data analysis that I used, uh, we looked at data that we received from a hospital in the Netherlands, which was a year's worth of data and included uh, over 30,000 uh, patient procedures. Uh, with this data, we wanted to group it so that it wasn't uh, as, as large. So we looked at uh, ward location groupings and medical specialties, basically where you might need to go within the hospital and also the type of procedure you might have, be it surgery or uh, medicine issue or the emergency care unit. Uh, we also looked at emergency and also elective patients. So if you're an emergent patient, you're gonna have much different needs and characteristics uh, as you go through the hospital versus an elective patient. And also we can control the elective patient's admissions uh, over time. So using that, we looked at the expected uh, contribution uh, uh, that a single patient might have on the system. So looking at our graphs, we had uh, over time a probability on each day that, um, that someone of a specific patient type and uh, ward location might put onto the system. And, uh, we start at day one and go out to the longest amount of time that someone might be in the hospital. So how we convert this from this, uh, this long-term view to a weekly steady state calendar is to uh, suppose that we look at a patient admitted on Monday. With this patient admitted on Monday, we take their day one data and then we look at their day eight data. And we combine so we'd look at day one, day eight, day 15, all the way until the, the last possible day that someone stayed there. We would then combine these two to create the cumulative probability that someone might be in the hospital on the Monday. So we went through and did this for each patient type, each grouping, and also uh, for each day of the week. So with all of this analysis, uh, we can then figure out an accurate way uh, of determining how many people should be in the hospital at any given time. Uh, so our solution based on this is that we can reduce the census variability by using uh, these better controls on when people are admitted over time and on each day of the week, which overall improves the quality of care. So if you look at the census by day of week graph here, uh, the, the red line shows the typical whale hump where you, early in the week, you have few, uh, a low average census in the hospital, but then by the end of the week, you're reaching your maximum occupancy, which leads to uh, what I talked to about before with the bed block and the cancellations. Um, with the increased average census, uh, we also have a potential for 
increasing the average census in the hospital. So by reducing the variability that we might experience over time to something that matches more of what the blue line shows us, we can have the opportunity to, uh, to increase the average census. So the uh, hospital can increase the number of patients they admit because they know how long uh, that they will be in there for. Uh, this, the data analysis tools that we used on this um, worked well for the Netherlands, but aren't just limited to that data set. Uh, this could be used on any uh, size uh, hospital system, be it quite small or something quite large, like the University of Michigan system, uh, where you have um, a very large throughput of patients. Uh, hopefully with this work, we can uh, decrease costs for healthcare and also improve the quality of care that patients receive. Uh, again, I'm Austin Chernowski, and I'd like to thank Jonathan Helm for all his uh, work and also Mark Denoy. Thanks.